Today, AMD is launching the newest addition to the RX 6000 series GPUs based on their RDNA 2 architecture. AMD is offering this product to those looking for 1080p high refresh rates, which might perhaps sound strange given the extravagant asking price. If you are on the market for a graphics card, definitely stick around as the RX 6600 XT might actually be something worth considering. This video is sponsored by ucdkeys.com. If you are looking to put together a new PC, you'll probably need a Windows 10 Pro key, and UCD Keys is currently selling them for less than $15. I've tested this service myself, and their keys work perfectly, even on Windows 11. You can also get Office 2019 keys, and they work globally. Use the coupon code C20 for an additional 20% off. Check out the links in the video description. So from the list of specs for this card, the thing that perhaps stands out the most is the relatively low amount of last level cache on this GPU, with 32 megabytes of what AMD calls Infinity Cache on a 128-bit, 16 gigabit per second memory bus that uses regular GDDR6 and not GDDR6X, like Nvidia's counterparts. Five months ago, I reviewed the 6700 XT when it launched that came with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 on a 192-bit wide memory bus, which allowed the card to fly through 1440p gaming and offer decent 4K performance if you were willing to compromise on a few settings. With a narrower bit bus and smaller amount of infinity cache, you'd expect the 6600 XT to really struggle at 1440p, and that could explain why AMD is positioning this as a 1080p card. We'll see if 32 megabytes of this global last level cache can still amplify the bandwidth enough for steady frame data delivery. With the 6700 XT, we saw that while the large pool of last level cache can help with the bandwidth limitations at lower resolutions and in fill rate limited cases, as you go higher in resolution, you start seeing a significant performance drop. As you'll see in a second, that seems to be the case with at least one game I tested, but the 1440p performance overall is surprisingly good. As with all RDNA 2 GPUs, the 6600 XT also features ray accelerators for real time ray tracing in games, but I can tell you right now that if you are looking for an affordable way to experience ray tracing, you should look elsewhere. The ray tracing performance on the 6600 XT is abysmal. All the other modern features are unavailable here though, like HDMI 2.1 for variable refresh rate in something like an OLED panel at 120Hz, something that was missing from the previous generation of AMD's GPUs like the RX 5600 XT and the 5700s. The sanctioned total board power for the 6600 600 XT starts at 160 watts. The model I'm testing is the MSI Gaming X, which under a Fermark stress test topped at 68 degrees Celsius while drawing 145 watts, which is around the same as the last generation card and what you'd expect for this tier. Even at full load, this MSI card remained quiet. Interestingly, while idling and drawing just 19 watts, the temperature stayed at 65 degrees Celsius. AMD tells me this is normal behavior, and I suspect this is due to this model featuring a zero RPM mode when the GPU is not in use, in combination with it being very hot here at the moment, but still, the 6700 XT also has this mode and idles at around 36 degrees Celsius. It's very odd to me seeing a mid-range GPU idling at 65 degrees, but if AMD says this is how the card is supposed to function, then I guess there's no reason to be concerned, and come winter time, you can use the GPU to warm up your room even when not gaming. The low power draw does mean you can comfortably use this card in a system with a 500 watt power supply, and that's something to consider when we look at the price of this product. I'm not a huge fan of the design that MSI has here. It has that gamer aesthetic which I'm personally not a fan of, but that's a very subjective thing. I do like the fact that the card comes with a really nice metal backlight. For I.O. you get three DisplayPort 1.4 ports with DSC and one HDMI 2.1 like I already mentioned. The MSI logo eliminates with RGB colors if that's your thing, and the card runs off of a single 8-pin connector. That's all well and good, but the main issue with this card is the price. The 6600 XT starts at $379, that's AMD's suggested price, and speaking with AIBs, I was told that most are planning to sell some models at around $400, which is what you'd expect from board partners in normal market conditions. E-tailers, however, will probably mark 
mark this up through the roof. So if you see this GB on Amazon or Newegg at $500 or more, then you know who's taking the lion's share here. We've seen this trend for the last year or so of Nvidia increasing prices and AMD following suit. And this is another example of exactly that. When it comes to price, the 6600 XT is positioned in between the RTX 3060 and the RTX 3060 Ti, edging closer to the Ti. So you'd expect performance to sit around that range as well. We've seen in the past that even when AMD offers a significantly cheaper and faster GPU than Nvidia, like in the RX 580 versus GTX 1060 period, consumers still buy Nvidia 10 to 1. So that being the case, it doesn't make much sense from a business perspective for AMD to continue offering faster GPUs than the competition at lower prices. The new normal is for AMD GPUs to slot right in between Nvidia's offerings. Still, I think a more appropriate price for this card would have been around the 330 to 350 dollar mark, as we'll see from the performance testing in a second. The high price was the downfall of the rather excellent 6700 XT, and we might be seeing that happen again with this younger sibling. Before we get to the benchmarks, I want to quickly address Smart Access Memory, or SAM. As you may know, if you have a Ryzen 3000 or 5000 series CPU and a B550 or X570 motherboard, these Radeon 6000 series GPUs allow you to make use of resizable bar and the 4G decode function, which in simple terms utilizes the PCI Express bus to give the processor full access to the GPU memory, instead of a limited block of 256 megabytes. So in some cases, this can reduce buffering and latency, which has an impact in many games. So for my testing, I always turn SAM on in the BIOS. It literally takes two clicks to enable, so I would expect my channel's audience to be making use of this feature. On the Nvidia side, there's also Rebar, although from my own testing, there's even less of an impact on performance than with SAM, which typically only increases frame rate by around 5%, if anything at all. Starting with some synthetic benchmarks, in 3 d Mark's Firestrike Ultra, the 6600 XT achieved a score of 6701 points, so that's 26% faster than the RTX 3060 and 11% slower than the 3060 Ti. So you might start to understand the pricing that AMD has chosen for this product. I did overclock the GPU and there's really not much extra performance that you can extract here. At most you'll get a 2% improvement and I did test this in games, so honestly you should just run the GPU stock and that's the results I'll be showing here. In TimeSpy, we see a similar story. This time, the 6600 XT was 15% slower than the 3060 Ti, which has an MSRP of just $20 more. Where things completely fall apart with the 6600 XTs in ray tracing, with an abysmal result in Port Royal, coming behind the cheaper RTX 3060 Non Ti. We already know that AMD GPUs don't perform great when it comes to ray tracing, with the exception of the 6900 XT, so this is no surprise. But I should point out that to this day I still don't see a reason to turn on ray tracing in games given the performance hit even on top tier GPUs so I wouldn't evaluate a GPU like the 6600 XT on ray tracing performance it's worth looking at but in my opinion not a deal breaker for cars in this range moving on to games we start with Assassin's Creed Valhalla one of my favorite AAA games of recent times and a game that heavily favors AMD GPUs at 1080p ultra settings the 6600 XT gets an outstanding result coming in just shy of the RTX 3080 at 87 frames per second on average. At 1440p, the 6600 XT does really well, getting 65 FPS on average. So despite the bandwidth limitations, we can see that at least in this game, the Infinity Cache is doing a good job of hiding that bottleneck. I've included the 1% lows here and they are on par with a much more expensive RTX 3070. So at first glance, it would appear the 6600 XT won't have much trouble handling 1440p. However, moving on to the Nvidia sponsored Watch Dogs Legion, we get the worst case scenario for the 6600 XT coming in at 68 FPS average, so slower than the 5700 XT and a massive 21% slower than the 3060 Ti. At 1440p, the AMD GPUs really struggle in this game, even the RTX 3060 now beating the 6600 XT. It's hard to say what the limitation is here, but given the good results delivered by the RX 6800 XT, for instance, it seems that bandwidth could in indeed be a limiting factor here for the 6600 XT. This is an outlier result for sure, but it's still worth considering. In Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p Ultra, the 6600 XT sits in between the 5700 XT and the RTX 3060 
Galaxy Ti, delivering a solid 69 FPS on average. At 1440p, we see a similar story with the 6600 XT in a completely different tier than the 3060 Ti, so pretty underwhelming at just 43 FPS. You could of course lower settings a bit and get perfectly playable frame rates in this title at 1440p, but comparing apples to apples, you'll be getting better performance out of the slightly more expensive Nvidia competitor. In Borderlands 3 at 1080p, looking at just this tier of cards, the 6600 XT performs great at 101 FPS average, beating the 3060 Ti by a significant margin while costing $20 less, and at 1440p, it still edges out the Nvidia card by a couple of frames. This is max settings at 1440p with a solid 65 FPS average and 58 1% lows, so 1440p seems perfectly achievable with this GPU in at least some games. And the last game we'll look at is a game that I really enjoyed, more so than I expected, and that's Resident Evil Village. Despite looking fantastic, this isn't a particularly hard game to run, kudos to the developers for the optimization work, and at 1080p, the 6600 XT gets 204 FPS on average, so still behind the RTX 3060 Ti, and at 1440p, we see a solid 141 FPS on average, again, behind the Nvidia card that costs just $20 more, so you can see a trend here. Now, one thing I was keen on testing was 4K with FSR running on an OLED at 120Hz, seeing as the 6600 XT supports HDMI 2.1, and could be a great companion to an OLED. In Resident Evil at 4K with FSR, the 6600 XT gets a stellar 95 FPS on average. I did try turning ray tracing on just to see what happened, and the performance tanked down to the 30s, so I really wouldn't recommend the 6600 XT for ray tracing, even with FSR. With ray tracing off, which to be honest doesn't offer anything in this game, the experience with FSR at 4K was excellent. This is a game I'm very familiar with, as I've completed it at native 4K, and to my eyes, the FSR experience offers only a small decrease to quality. It's enough to be noticeable, and it's definitely a compromise, don't get me wrong. You can tell the difference between native 4K and FSR upscaling, but it's a difference that's acceptable when you consider what you have to pay to play games at native 4K on the PC these days. The reason why I think this is worth looking into is that, like I've said in my recent reviews, it's time PC gamers start prioritizing the display when it comes to budgeting for a build. OLED is definitely worth working your setup around. I would still recommend having a regular desktop display for doing work, but investing in a 48 or 55 inch OLED for gaming if you have the space for it is the best improvement you can make today to your gaming experience. The problem is that only something like a 6900 XT or the RTX 3090 will give you the frame rates to really take advantage of a 4K OLED at 120Hz, and those cars now cost more than the OLED itself, so FSR on a mid-range GPU is a compromise that I think is worth considering, ahead of just spending more on a GPU, and then pairing it with a regular gaming IPS or VA monitor. To me, it makes no sense getting something like an RTX 3070, and then pairing that with a $300 to $500 1440p IPS display, even a high refresh rate one. Trust me, you will get a much better gaming experience with a 6600 XT or a 3060 Ti paired with an OLED, and end up spending roughly the same amount of money. If you are a regular viewer, you are probably sick of hearing me harp on about OLEDs, but you have to remember that when you are gaming, you are not looking at your graphics card, you are looking at the monitor. That's how you enjoy games, through the display and controller inputs. The GPU is just a means to an end. I think the vast majority of PC gamers forget this, so in that light, these mid-range GPUs start making a lot of sense if you have a limited budget to fit everything in. So what are my final thoughts on the 6600 XT? It's fine. I ran a poll on Twitter which got over 1700 votes from mostly PC enthusiasts asking what resolution they gamed at. 1440p came out ahead of 1080p by a decent margin, so it seems just plain wrong for AMD to be launching a GPU for $379 in 2021 that is targeting the 1080p audience, if you ask me. Even if you decided to skimp on a display, you can still find high refresh 1440p monitors for very affordable prices these days, so the way AMD is positioning the 6600 XT is a bit misguided in my opinion given the price. If you look at the 6600 XT as a solid 1440p performer, however, I'd say it gets the job done. If it were my money, I would spend the extra $20 on a 3060 Ti. It's
it's a small increase in price for a generally better performing GPU. That is, of course, if one could be found at MSRP, which is a fantasy. In the real world right now, the 3060 Ti's are going for around $800 to $900 on Newegg. So if the RX 6600 XT hits shelves for around $500 to $600, I guess you could say you are getting 3060 Ti levels of performance for $300 less. And considering the fact that AIBs are telling me there's going to be plenty of stock for this GPU at launch, I think you could do worse when it comes to value right now. And the 6600 XT might be worth considering if you really need a new graphics card. That is, if you already have an OLED display, of course. A big thanks to AMD and MSI for providing a review sample for today's independent review and a huge thanks to my awesome patrons who keep this channel alive. Consider joining my Patreon for just $1 per month and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server where I regularly share exclusive info on upcoming technology and products. If you can't contribute financially at this time, then please give this video a like and share it with friends as that really helps. Thanks for watching and until the next one.